guys, it's Hatch Romano. How's everyone doing? You know I love a random spotlight on a random company. Um, because of my job, I luckily have access to little sample sets from lots of random companies around the world. And I always like to explore them. So many I've never heard of. So many I'm guessing some of you might not have heard of. So I like to give them a bit of attention. Talk about their fragrances, sniff them on camera, see what they're like. And uh, yeah, just have a little chin wag, basically. Have a little chit chat. So today I'm doing three companies. We have two French companies and then we have one from Switzerland. I don't know m much at all about any Swiss perfumes or Swiss created or Swiss envisioned fragrances. So this is gonna be fun. I'm excited. I love smelling new things. This is a treat for me and hopefully for you, even though you can't smell them, but that's my job, to try and describe them as best I can. So I will try. So we're gonna start with the Swiss one, only because I'm most intrigued about that one. It's called Ladone, or Ladon Parfums. They are created in Switzerland, but produced in grass. No surprise there. A lot of fragrances are produced in grass because there are a lot of factories there and ingredients and materials and all of that. I've been there, if you care to watch my vlog, Go search it. I went on my own on a solo trip um, with not so good a camera as this one. Not this one's the best, but and yeah, I went there and I vlogged it. If you care to go and see grass, I went around on my own for five days. So we're going to start with Ladon Parfums. So there's four in the line. They are all named after a star. There's a star called Elenia, which is part of the Dracon constellation. It's something about light. I don't know. Um, they're called Transcendental Swiss Creations. Welcome to the universe of Ladonne. Ladon, I'm going to quickly just read their bump, I guess, just to give a, get a feel of what they are. Ooh, okay, back in a sec. So it says the name Ladon is derived from Laden, the serpent-like dragon in Greek mythology, placed in the Garden of Hesperides to protect the sought-after apples. Ladon, oh, okay, I've, there's a Black Phoenix perfume called Ladon. It's, it's making sense right now. So it's Greek mythology, it's stars, uh, something like that. I just need to find, I did find a really good description of their whole... Okay, this is what they say. It says, at Ladon, uh, Ladonne Parfums, each fragrance is viewed as a piece of art, as a painting, a musical composition or literary work. I guess most fragrances are though, right? Similar to artistic, literary, musical compositions, uh, the individual components of Ladone Parfums come together to create a fragrance masterpiece. Ooh, okay. Blowing your own trumpet much? These things retail at, I worked it out, um, around 220 pounds, guys. They're available in America, Germany, Italy, some of Saudi Arabia, and Switzerland, of course, so not everywhere in the world. They are all extra, so they're all highly concentrated. I don't know what to expect at all. I'm really excited. Um, it's been created by artisans with affinity for their art and made expressly for perfume connoisseurs who enjoy life to the fullest. So I guess if you don't enjoy life to the fullest, you you can't use them. La Donna Parfums leave nothing to the chance. We take pride in offering only the highest quality fragrances. And it says they're all unisex. So I just want to smell them. I'm tired of talking, right? Let's smell them. So I'm just gonna grab them. There's four of them. So they're all called Elenia something. Elenia is this star that they've named them after. So I'm gonna start with Azure because I know that it's the first one they created. So let me just spray it and then find the description so you can Find out what it is. Okay, this is Elenia Azure. Okay, so this, is, this says, the origins of the Elenia fragrance Azure lead to the famous French city of Grasse on the beautiful Côte d'Azur. The first in the line of fragrances has been a justly named Azure or Sky Blue in homage to ist fascinating origins. Oops, typo. Elenia Azure is an oriental woody. The main top note is characterized by the exclusive scent of teak wood. Accented, accented, sorry, by notes of violet rose. Oh gosh, there are typos here, guys. Not detriment to them, but oh my gosh. Violet rose blossoms and a hint of saffron. The middle notes are rounded off. I think that means rounded off by slightly animal eagle wood. What is that? And balanced and deepened by 
notes of leather and tobacco. So I can already smell this from the blotter from here. This, strangely enough, feels very much Middle Eastern to me. Even though there's no oud, possibly there is. But you have this rose, saffron and an intense wood feeling. It's actually really nice as far as that sort of style of fragrance goes. There's a really beautiful woody tone to this. This is surprising. I didn't know what to expect from them, but this is deep. It's rich. It's kind of classy. It does feel familiar, though. There's only so far you can go with Oud Rose, right? I mean, there's so many Oud Rose compositions out there. But I really like it, and I thought it was going to be... <clears throat> light. This thing is about a, named after a star, but then the inspiration is grass. It's called azure, but it's a Middle Eastern style feeling fragrance. Colour me confused. Yeah, really confused by this. This feels kind of all over the place. I, I like to get the feeling of something straight away, and I'm just confused why this Elenia star and this Greek mythology thing is now themed on the south of France, yet feels Middle Eastern. Besides all of that, it's a really cool fragrance, I like it. It's, I guess I want to say typically rose, oody, intense, woody feeling. It's nice. I like it. There are other things like it though. So let's move on. So the next one I'm going to grab at random is called Elenia White. I'm really hoping that this is going to be a white floral because that would be cool. I love white florals. I can't, I cannot find Elenia White on their, their site, which is really strange. Oh, hold on a second. Dibby dibby doo. Oh, Elenia White, it says new Elenia White. Okay, so new Elenia White. The perfect color, white symbolizes light, faith, joy, happiness. Elenia White offers a glimpse into the collection defining Ist, mysterious sensual character. Elenia White is an elegant oriental floral with an intense top note of jasmine samba. I think they mean sambac. I'm not mocking them, by the way, guys. I'm sure it's been translated because they're from Switzerland, but I don't know. Uh, jasmine sambac rounded off with soft iris, bergamot tuberose, um, Siamese benzoin, peach blossom, herat note. Elenia White's patchouli foundation enhances the warm velvety sandalwood in the bass note mixed by a sensual musk accord. Again, I can smell it from here. So they, they aren't lying when they say that they're extra. And this is beautiful. Oh my gosh, this is really nice. Wow, this is so much nicer than I thought it was going to be as well. Ah! It's a white floral with a, a powdery background. It's really nice to have a strong white heady floral that's been softened by powder. It's like uh, there's a fragrance by Karna called Bessos, which is loads of jasmines and loads of irises together. It's a really nice balance. This is absolutely stunning. I'm really impressed. I love it. Oh gosh, why does it have to be £220, guys? Not happy. There's a semi-sweetness to it. It feels like... Oh my gosh, I don't know, this is really tough to describe, but it's definitely very beautiful, and in terms of a floral, this is just... It doesn't smell like iris or oris root, it doesn't have that makeup-y, buttery type feeling to it, but the oris or the iris is giving it a real... Very, it's a real um, elegant and expensive smelling powderiness. This is so beautiful. It smells like £220. <laughs> Almost like a, a, a really elegant French boudoir type. My light's gone off, but it doesn't matter. You can still see me. Uh, boudoir type floral. This is lovely. I'm going to revisit them again, but I want to move on because now I'm getting more excited about this brand. So this one is called Alenia Gold. Let's see what's going on with this. Let's give it a couple of seconds to wafty woo, and I'll just look up what it is. So, Elenia Gold. Symbolically, gold represents only the best. Hey, what about diamonds? This precious metal has been the chosen metal of gods and kings since early times. Elenia Gold signifies shining light. 
Uh, it's an oriental floral again. Notes of black orchid and Sicilian bergamot. Hold on a second, isn't black orchid a fantasy accord that Tom Ford created? Or the perfume is behind Tom Ford? I don't know. Um, Sicilian bergamot, white lemon blossom and a drop of cardamom accompany this combination, it's accented by notes of sandalwood, coconut, iris blossom uh, and vetiver. Whoa! Okay, these compositions are great on paper and on actual paper as well. Let's smell this one. Okay, this one's really irisy. This feels like a crisp, woody oris root, or iris as it's known in the perfume world. Although they never use the flower, they use the root. This is again, really nice. It's really well put together. It almost reminds me a little bit of, um, if you're familiar with a company called Mendita Rosa, they have a line called Talismans and they have one called Natuno. It's a, it's a transparent, kind of icy cold iris with really cold woods. It's really crisp. This is beautiful as well. Wow, La Donne, you have my seal of approval right now. The price maybe not so much though. Bring it down, bring it down a little bit. Yeah, this reminds me of Natuno. I actually like this even more than Natuno. It's mainly iris that I smell. I don't really smell anything that would be black orchid. I, then I guess I'm just associating it with the monster that is Tom Ford's Black Orchid, so. This is really nice. I can feel oud in it again, though. So this, this feels a little bit Middle Eastern again, but much lighter and much airier and much colder. Really cool. Okay, I'm excited. What's the last one? So this one's called Alenia Black. Oh, okay. Now we're talking. You know I like stuff that's dark, twisted, and mm, I don't know, incense -y. So let's read what this one's about. So, Alenia Black is a new one, again, it says. Um, Alenia Black, associated with dark blue starry night and the dragon constellation, expresses timeless elegance and dignity. Uh, warm, spicy oriental, frankincense, pink pepper, ylang ylang, bergamot, black amber. I'm loving the sound of this. Uh, the warm scent of clothes and earthy cyprid. Does that, is it maybe cypriol? I don't know. Um, Harmonising iris. They like iris, right? It's in all, all of them, I think. Um, balsamic, labdanum, patchouli, amber and tonka. So this is going to be definitely oriental. It's going to be ambery. I'm guessing it's going to be soft with a dark twist. Let's smell it. Oh, I love this as well. Wow, I started on a good one. These ones have got something to follow up with now because all of these are really lovely. This is so lovely, it's so well composed, or composed really well, I should say. I can feel a lot going on here. It's powdery iris, there's a dark ambery feeling. It's exotic, but soft and elegant at the same time. This is like an, an amber, but really refined and elegant. It's so pretty, I love this as well. Oh my gosh, I love this brand. I was gonna give these away, guys. I don't think I'm gonna give them away anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so selfish, but these are so beautiful. I wanna actually wear them properly. It's so well put together. It's kind of seamless, but at the same time, it's got a lot of character. I know that does, that's kind of a contradiction, but it's a really a beautiful powdery amber but not rich, like there's not a lot of labdanum in it, there's not a lot of resins going on, there's a lot of light, almost fluffiness going on along the top of it, and there's a wood kind of piercing through the middle. This one's really tough to describe and it feels very expensive again, both of them. I don't know what expensive is. What is expensive in a smell? It's all down to the individual, I know that, but all of these feel, apart from maybe the first one, Really gorgeous, I love this. There's a dusty wood behind. Oh, I could smell this all day. Oh, okay, I'm gonna leave it there because I'm gonna start gushing. I'm gonna move on to the next one. I'm gonna have a break because I have um, someone coming to my house to deliver food shopping for me, but I'm gonna continue after this with uh, Kabir and Les Cocottes de Paris. 
But right now, I'm just going to wallow and dive into these fragrances. I love them. Way thumbs up for me. Just, why are they £220? They're £220 because they smell like this. That's why. Anyway, see you guys soon. So it's been about half an hour since I first sprayed them on the blotters. I don't expect them to smell the same as they would on skin, but that's the purpose of a spotlight. It's just a quick overview. I did get a waft of the first one, the Azure, on the other side of the room when I was sitting there, which is kind of crazy from a blotter. That's intense. This one's still really strong, and it really does just smell like a, I guess, run-of-the-mill rose oud thing. The second one, I can't remember what it was called. Irisy. This one actually smells a little bit like the first now. It's like they're meshing into one. The floral is still absolutely beautiful. It's still strong. This is lovely. This is my favourite one. But then, I like florals. What can you say? One of them has actually disappeared. The last one, I think it was gold. I can hardly smell this one now, so... Retract a little bit of my enthusiasm from before, but this one's kind of disappeared, but then it's not skin, so I don't know This is just an overview, right? They're all still they all still smell very beautiful. I really like them uh, The floral is my favorite one's a rose oud the other two are irisy and cold But I said that so we're gonna move on to les coquettes de paris, okay, so what do we know about this brand? I know that there is a company called Jardins Decrivant. I've smelled all of their fragrances. They have six main ones and then they have a second three. They're all based on literature. Um, the lady behind it also owns and produces the perfume. She's the perfumer behind Gris Gris. I don't know if you know that line. There's four of them. They're all inspired by different styles of tattoos around the world. But then she has these three as well. So she has three lines of fragrances. She's the perfumer behind all of them. She is the nose, and I'm excited. These are all named after courtesans, and they all have the pictures of each courtesan on them. I expect them to be very, very French. Her main line, Jardins Decrivant, are almost Baroque in style. They're really lovely. I like all of them bar one. Junkie, I've mentioned in a couple of other reviews of mine. There's Junkie Orlando. Um, Marlow, Gigi, which is a gorgeous white floral. They're all, they're all just, they're all really nice. I really like them. So I have high expectations of these ones too. These are wand ones, not spritzers. So this is going to be a skin test. So let's talk about them. So we're going to start with La Castillon. <laughs> I'm probably butchering this, but the picture of the lady is, she's quite gothic. She has a something over her eye. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. If I do it, it might make the camera go crazy, but we'll try. I could have just messed up the entire video. It says, this nocturnal vampire-like creature has burst upon the social scene. She brings a fragrance of newness. She's perfectly beautiful, bubbly, doesn't want to be silent. Da -da 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 -da. Does it say anything about the notes? Oh, it does. So it says the top notes are citron and mugwort. Middle notes are Copaiba, which is a, a balm, I think. Uh, licorice patchouli, sharp cedar. Then the base notes are ambergris myrrh and Styrax. Styrax is benzoin, which is caramelly. So let's see what they're like. Intrigued, to say the least. Okay, so this smells almost gourmand. It smells almost like a slightly burnt caramel feeling. Nothing like any of the others I've smelled from them. I've smelled all of them, six, seven, eight, nine of her, this perfumer's fragrances before. It's kind of crisp. It's really hard smelling fragrances when you're a guy because the, your hairs tickle your nose whenever you smell them. Not fun. But yeah, this is almost like a crisp, almost burnt caramel gourmand thing. What are the notes that I can feel? It doesn't feel like any of those. I guess it's more on a lightly resinous side with a benzoin, which is making it feel like caramel. And there's a touch of herbalness, but nothing super strong to speak of. It's okay. 
It's alright, I don't mind it. These retail, just as a side note, they retail for, um, I think, 98 euros, so they're a little bit less expensive than the Ladone ones. Wow. It's okay. It's nothing, I don't think it's super groundbreaking, but it's pleasant enough. It doesn't feel uh, kind of French like I thought it was going to. Typical French Baroque style feeling, especially because they're named after courtesans. I thought it was going to be super Parisian and stuff like that, but it doesn't. So the next one is going to be La Belle Otero. Let's try this one. So this one says, nothing could be more picturesque than the life of La Belle Otero. Singing, dancing, jumping on a table. She sounds fun. I like her. The beautiful gypsy has an insatiable nature. The queen of elegance. Uh, some of her, I guess you could say, clients were kings uh, from Paris to Monte Carlo. She was the most ruthless courtesan of the Belle Epoque. She devoted her life to dancing, men, precious stones, gambling, and above all, freedom. So the notes of this one are neroli, pepper, absinthe, fig, and ginger in the top. The middle notes are violet, musk, lavender, narcissus, which is also known as daffodil, and then something called buchu. No idea what that is. B-U-C-H-U. And then the bass notes are frankincense, sandalwood, and iris. This sounds like a really interesting composition. Wow. Absinthe, ginger, pepper, musk, lavender, narcissus. This sounds like it might be even a bit forgery or maybe even masculine. I don't know. We'll find out when we smell it. Let's see. This is nice. This is like an aromatic fig. It doesn't feel as masculine as I thought it was going to. There's something a little bit waxy and a tiny bit dirty underneath, but it mainly feels almost a little bit tree sappy herbal in a way. Mmm, interesting. It's like tinges of green and sap and the frankincense is there, but it's kind of backgroundy. I don't know, I can feel the frankincense in its resinous form as opposed to being a smoked frankincense in here. It's, yeah, it's a little bit kind of waxy. This is unusual, a tiny bit leathery feeling as well, but only a little bit. It's more about a herbaceous nature with a light resinous feeling as well. Mm. It's definitely balmy. It's a little bit exotic feeling. Again, it doesn't feel French at all. It doesn't feel like what I thought it was going to smell like, considering the theme of the line. So we're going to move on. So this last one is called Mel Cleo. She looks cool. She has the biggest headdress on I've ever seen, possibly. A very elaborate and dark headdress. So she, lady, is... Harmony, classicism, classicism, style and restraint are the values Cleo de Marode acquired at the Paris Opera. Her controlled appearance conceals a more ambiguous nature. She stands out in a sort of brothel that has become the foyer of the ballet school. She's all about class, this lady. She was considered the world's most beautiful woman in 1896. She captured her contemporaries' imagination. She sounds beautiful. So it says here, top notes, rosewood, bergamot, and lychee. Middle notes, night blooming Sirius, which I don't think has an aroma, so it's gonna be the perfumer's interpretation of what that is. Ylang Ylang rose, and the base notes are cotton flower and lichen. So that could be oak moss, I don't know. Oh gosh, okay, this one definitely feels the way I thought the rest were going to feel. This is super soft, super powdery, almost like a tangy almond in the heart of it. It feels very uh, powder puff, French boudoir -y type. It's ultra soft, kind of mumsy, I guess. Almost verging on something like amber, but not. It's got, oh gosh, this definitely feels very 50s kind of smell. Almost like flapper, even though she was from the 1800s, I guess, but this definitely has a feeling. This one feels like a nod to the past. Not even a nod. This feels like the past completely. Oh, I really like this. This is making me think of my childhood. 
it's almost like, um, do you know Band de Caron? That really soft, super, super ultra soft fragrance that you can wear on your skin or put in the bath. It's kind of like a luxury, soft, powder puffy feeling and it's sweet in the core. There's this really sweet tang. Was there rose in this? Yes, there is, there's rose in it. So this is an ultra feminine powdery, soft rosy thing that is verging on amber. This is really lovely, but definitely vintage smelling, but not fusty. It's almost playful and beautiful. I guess they're trying to reflect her beauty in a fragrance, the lady, Mel Cleo. I really like this. This is my favorite from the three. I wouldn't wear it personally, but it definitely evokes a feeling. It's really nice for, for that, at least. So that's those three. I'm gonna take another break. So when we move on to the next and final one, I can see how these ones have developed and then talk about the next. So I'll see you guys very soon, goodbye. Some of these have changed a bit, these last ones, these Les Cocottes de Paris. This one is still ultra soft, this beautiful Mel Clio one. So soft, softened even more than it was when I first sprayed it. It's softened even more. It's, it's almost like a, the fluffiest thing I've ever smelled in perfume. The second one, the first one, sorry, has turned a lot more exotic. It's darker, it almost feels like even Middle Eastern a little bit. I like it. And this strange herbaceous one has lost some of its resinous quality. And it feels a lot more aromatic, but not masculine. I think it's meant for women, I'm not sure. So if it is, this is probably the least masculine aromatic I've ever smelled. I kind of like it. But we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to these guys. This is Kabea from Paris. So these fragrances are all inspired by the Mediterranean. From what I've read, they're going to be light. They are all floral based fragrances. The visionary behind it is not the perfumer. Her name is Khadija Ben Ayed. And the perfumer has a really cool name. I forget her name, I'm gonna look it up very quickly. They are from Paris, so we're going back to France. Well, we're staying with France. Uh, let's have a look. So they have four fragrances in their line. These are a little bit more affordable as well. They retail at about 70 English pounds, I think. So uh, let's have a look and find out what's going on with these guys. I think the founder trained in grass, lived in grass. Grass is just the hub of everything, isn't it? So fun. Reminder again, I have been there and vlogged it. So go and check it out if you like. The perfumer is Stephanie Bakouche. I love that name, that's a really cool name. So these are all gonna be very floral. I feel like they're gonna be very simplistic. Uh, just looking at them, they look like they're gonna be simplistic, clean lines, something along the lines of possibly Jo Malone. This is my preconceived notions, which you should never have, but that's how I feel they're gonna be, and the names as well. So the first one's called Nuit de Jasmine. Let's see. I, I just feel like they're going to be simplistic, clean, s just easy to like. And I have a feeling in the back of my mind that I saw these fragrances when I went to Grass. There's lots of little shops everywhere on every corner that sell perfume and they ring a bell for me. So let's see. Okay, this doesn't smell like jasmine. This smells fruity and it smells not nui at all, it doesn't smell anything dark or night. This almost feels, dare I say, super synthetically sweet, I don't know. It doesn't even really smell floral, it smells like prune or, oh there is a jasmine behind, there's a French jasmine behind it, but that's not the first thing you smell when you smell it. The jasmine I can feel as I pull this away from my nose, but Okay, it is revealing itself a little bit more. There's this red fruity feeling over the top of the jasmine, which is almost suffocating it a little bit. It's very friendly. It's a, a jasmine that has been kind of covered in some kind of fruitiness. The jasmine is coming out a little bit more as I smell it. 
there was a slight rougher edge coming out because Jasmine does have this rough edge. Sometimes it's a bit dirty, indolic, you know, those kinds of things. But this is really simple. It's almost watery. It's airy, it's light. It's very simple, so I'm gonna move on. So the next one is called uh, Secret Decay. Not decay as in rotting, Secret de K as in Kabea. Kabea? Let's read what this one's about. So this one says, transporting you to a carefree childhood, summer, uh, Mediterranean, the mild and cooling scent of geranium in a delicate blend. Says it has mint, mandarin, geranium, linden blossom, strawberry, patchouli, guyacwood, and tonka. And the main thing I smell is strawberry. This is again very fruity. It's light, it's airy. They do remind me of Joe Malone fragrances for sure. Very, very similar feeling. It smells like summer strawberries. It doesn't really smell of geranium. Geranium to me is always like rose on acid. It's like a, a much more intense rosy feeling and this is light, it's very pretty. There's something slightly off-putting. I think the Gayak is maybe juxtaposed a little bit, which is making it smell a tiny bit dirty and smoky in the background, but I mean a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. It's mainly about strawberries. Okay, I can move on. Mm, not sure how I feel about these ones so far, guys, sorry. So this one's called Lily Cherie. I wonder what this one's about. I just want to make a note of saying what's really funny about the website is when you search a particular fragrance, there's only four of them, it has similar to this perfume and then it just lists the other three, <laughs> which is kind of funny to me because there's only four, so I guess you're saying your fragrances are all similar without meaning to. This one says, contrasted, oh, captivating honeysuckle, contrasted against summer fruits with a delicate breeze blowing through the flowers. It's galbanum, mandarin, bergamot, honeysuckle, lily of the valley, summer fruits, green tea, white musk, amber, and cedarwood. So the note lists on these are really friendly, really, uh, I don't want to say obvious, but quite, uh, not common, that's, that's a really bad thing to say, but there's no surprises in here. There's nothing that makes you think, oh, okay, this might be fun. This smells like kind of like an aloe vera type green freshness. It smells like something I would spray my room with. I'm not saying it smells cheap or anything, I'm just saying it's 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 an, almost like an aquatic or ozonic type aloe vera with very, very light florals in it. This one's just unfortunately not very special to me. I'm really sorry to Kabea Paris, but I will say something, they do fit the theme of a lot of the fragrances I smelled when I went to Grass. The fragrances in Grass on every corner with these independent companies were very simplistic, um, very true to the materials that you can find in Grass, not over the top, just very understated and sometimes elegant, sometimes boring unfortunately, but these feel like they really fit in with the theme of the grass fragrances I smelled. So I'm gonna move on to the last one and then wrap up the video. So this one's called Belle Epine. It's just that thing again, similar products, the other three in the line to this one. So this one says, a lush and vibrant rose, sparkling with subtle effervescence and the throbbing intensity of a finger caught on a thorn. I love that description. So the notes are dewdrops, fresh grass, rose absolute, geranium, black currant, cedarwood, and musk. Very simple again. I like this. It's rosy for sure, but there is a really nice greenery to it that's, which makes you think of the entire rose plant. I have a fragrance by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab called Rose Red and it encompasses the entire rose plant, just not the flower, and I like that. This is a similar idea. This is probably my favourite as far as the other three go and in terms of the whole feeling. This one's got a bit of more character, so it's essentially rosy. There is a stemmy type feeling to it. It almost feels a little bit like a florist and I really like that. This one's really beautiful. The last one was the best. 
it's almost, oh gosh, there's something a bit, um, <clears throat> like crushed leaves about it. So it's a rose with a little bit more character, a little bit more oomph, a little bit more of an interesting feeling because a rose is a rose is a rose. There's only so many roses you can do. And I like they've added in this, it's almost very realistic rose, this fragrance. And there's this, this touch of greenery, which I love. This would be so nice to wear around grass. Ah, oh, memories. No, oh, take me back. This is a good one. This smells like other things I smelled there, but a much better rose. Clean, simplistic again, beautiful, with just enough of an edge to give it a bit of greenery and thorniness, I guess. They hit the nail on the head with that one. So I'm gonna leave it there because this table's a mess and my nose is getting tired. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video. I'm out sure my nose, come below down there to subscribe and I'll do a lot more things like this because I have lots of sample sets and things and just things to discover. It's exciting. Anyway, I'll speak to you guys soon. I hope you guys are having a lovely week. Goodbye.